the State Bangalow Forest, the Marlborough Stretch near Rockhampton, or what about the Flinders Highway from Townsville to Mount Isa, where I currently stand? What do all these places have in common? Well, they hold the mysteries and the secrets to the unsolved murders in the outback. And as you can clearly see behind me, the Australian brush is no joke. Where if you're not found in the first two weeks, there is buckley chances of finding you or any evidence that may be on you. As the Australian bushland has masked and disguised many screams in some tragic events, we're gonna be going over a double murder of an Australian mum and her daughter that remained unsolved for five years. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the story. Stevens, a 20-year-old single mother from the Northern Territory in the Alice Springs, where she resided there with her two-year-old daughter, Candelise Pierce. Now, Carly was known from her friends and family to be happy-go-lucky, bubbly, full of life, and often shy and quiet. Now, Carly, in the previous two years, did not have much luck when it came to dating, but she was completely contempt just being in her apartment with her two-year-old daughter and finding her way through life. And that is up until she met Daniel. Now, immediately when she met Daniel, she fell head over heels for him. As he was a little bit older, he had plenty of money, he was taking her out on lovely dates, but there was one particular friend who wasn't buying it, and her name was Tanya where she got an immediate bad gut feeling about this guy. Now I'm gonna show you a quick clip of what Tanya has to say before we get stuck into what happened. Check this out. Law, the man she'd fallen for, Daniel Holdham, was about to exploit. Right from the start, Carly's friend Tanya Weber thought something wasn't quite right. Carly introduced me to him and he shook my hand. Nice to meet you. He didn't really, didn't really look me in the eye. Um, nothing really stood out, except for he was, I looked a lot older and was sort of wondering what Carly was doing with him. What was your gut feeling? Didn't like him. No, didn't like him at all. But it was too late. In November 2008, Carly and little Candelise suddenly left Alice Springs with the mysterious Daniel Holdham. So Daniel Holdham had quite a bit of struggles fitting in with the inner circle of family and friends and this was probably due to his age. He was 20 years her senior, meaning he was in his early 40s and she was only 20 years of age at the time. Now in November in 2008, Carly's family and friends received a text message that kind of angered them a little bit as she told them that they had upped and left to Queensland. Now. Daniel and Carly had been planting the seed for a few weeks now, saying that they wanted to move to Queensland, but this came out of nowhere. But Daniel had already won over everyone in their circle, telling them that he had this new job opportunity, it was in the mines, it was going to be heaps of money for their small family. So everyone kind of just accepted it. Now, less than two weeks after them moving to Queensland, Tanya, her best friend, received a phone call from Carly crying her eyes out, saying that she had made a huge mistake and this guy is not what he seems to be, saying he was super cruel and verbally abusive. But Carly, being the happy-go-lucky girl she was, she didn't want to stress her friend Tanya out, so she just played it down and played completely cool, giggling towards the end of the phone call. So after this move, everything kind of just quieted down where Carly was still sending messages to her family and friends, checking in on them, and even a few occasions, she even wired some money to help her friends out. Okay, so now we're gonna fast forward two years. So Carly is now living in Queensland where she's keeping touch with her family and friends, promising them that she's looking for work and Daniel's looking after them incredibly. Where two best friends decided to go for a motocross road in the state Belangelo Forest in New South Wales, where they stumbled across a grim discovery when they pulled off their helmets to chill out, to cool down, 
they were standing right next to human remains. Now immediately they called the police, the police came out, cordoned off the area, bagged up the bones and took them back. Now this hit the news, but it was known as a Jane Doe, as the bones had been there for over two years now, and there was absolutely no way of linking any evidence to the area or the remains. And these remains remained in evidence bags for five years. That was up until man traveling in the outback Australia, a thousand kilometers away from where the remains were found in the Bangalore forest, where he found a suitcase on the side of the road. Now, when you see a suitcase on the side of the road, all you true crimers out there, I know what you're thinking. I think the same thing when I see a garbage bag, like with duct tape on it on the side of the road. I think, I wonder if, and that's what this bloke did. So he pulled up, had a peek, and to his grim discovery, he found the remains of a child. Now straight away, they called the police, and that's when the police started connecting some dots. As these two remains, they were a match through DNA. And that's when the detectives of the New South Wales police, who are excellent at what they do, had figured it out that these were the remains of Carly Pierce Stevens and her two-year-old daughter, Candelise Pierce. So after months of investigations, it finally led them to Daniel Holdham. Now Daniel Holdham, the first few weeks of his arrest, wasn't very talkative and wasn't giving out any hands to the police, but he finally ended up cracking and telling them exactly what happened. And it is truly evil. So after they left for Queensland, Carly Stevens, she wasn't even alive after the second week. So this is what we know. Now when they went on their trip to Queensland, Carly Pierce Stevens soon realized that they weren't even heading north. They were heading south. They were going to New South Wales. Now with this surprise switch up, Obviously, Carly did not want to move to New South Wales. That was not a part of the plan, and she hadn't had a chance to let her family know of the new update. But it was already too late, as Daniel Holdham had already planned everything in his sick little mind. Now, that's where he drove her out to the forest, locked Candelise in the car, and took her out only a few hundred meters into the scrub near a dirt track, where he unhalived her by standing on her neck, placing her in a shallow grave, essaying her a few times he then returns to the car and god knows what poor little candelise was thinking where he then drove to a nearby hotel and used a plastic bag to unalive poor little two-year-old candle and that's where he put her remains into a suitcase and then fled the state and dumped her on the side of the road now this went unsolved for five years and that's terrifying and just so you know, sorry, just so you guys know, there are over 750 human remains in evidence bags with no leads or no evidence to this day. Now that is a scary number. But as I showed you in the so after that, it went to trial and Daniel Holdham was sentenced to two life sentences without parole. Once again, a massive win for the justice system. Alrighty guys, that's going to be a wrap. Thank you so much for watching, viewing and subscribing. We are on the rise to 20k subscribers in just 4 months. Now that is exponential growth for an Australian channel. So I wanted to say a massive thank you for myself. And we're going to take this channel to the top. Till then, I'll see you guys tomorrow.